Example four, using completing the square when a does not equal one. So let's go ahead and write out this quadratic equation. So we have 9x squared minus 12x plus 9, which is equal to 0. So the first thing we're going to do is we want to make sure the leading coefficient is a 1. In order for that to be the case, we need to divide every term by the leading coefficient. And in this case, the leading coefficient is a 9. So we have to divide each term by 9 that's in the equation. Okay. So for step 2 then, we get 9 divided by 9, which now gives us 1 here. And then minus, we need to simplify 12 over 9. We know that 3 goes into both of those terms, so that's going to be 4 thirds x plus 9 divided by 9 is 1, and then 0 divided by 9 is equal to 0. Okay, now we've accomplished the goal of making sure now a is equal to 1 in this, as the leading coefficient. Now, this third step now here is to leave the variable terms on the left side of the equation. And then we're going to subtract 1 to both sides and leaving space here for our next step. And that next step is we're going to put the value of c and we want to solve for c. So we're going to add c to the left side and add c to the right side. Okay, so now we know that c is equal to one half the value of whatever b is, and then we're going to square it. Okay, so b again is the coefficient of the middle term. So b represents here four thirds. So we're going to take one half of 4 thirds and then we're going to square it okay well we know that one half of 4 thirds is the following we know that 2 can go into 4 so 2 is going to go into 4 2 times so therefore that's going to give us 2 thirds and so when we square 2 thirds that means we need to take 2 and multiply it by 2 which is going to give us 4 and 3 times 3 is going to give us 9. So therefore, c is going to equal 4 ninths. And now we're going to replace c to be that value. So now, in step number 4, we have x squared minus 4 thirds x plus 4 ninths. And that's equal to negative 1 plus 4 ninths. Okay? Okay, now we need to factor this. Now, we don't have to worry about trying to factor this the long way because we already figured out what do we have to square to get 4 ninths. And this is a perfect square trinomial. Well, we saw here that 2 thirds was the number that we had to square to get 4 ninths. And because this is a minus, then we know that this is going to give us x minus 2 thirds squared. Because when we multiply that together, we're going to get the, uh, the trinomial above. Okay, And so now we need to combine these values. Okay, So we know that 1 or negative 1 is the same thing as negative 9 over 9. And the reason why we do that is so that we can add the fraction for 4 ninths. Okay? So negative 9 ninths plus 4 ninths is going to give us negative 5 over 9. So therefore, we're going to get minus... 5 ninths. Okay. All right, now we're going to use the square root property. So by using the square root property, we're going to take the square root of x minus 2 thirds squared. And that's going to equal plus or minus, okay, the square root of negative 5 ninths. Okay. So now we need to simplify this square root of 5 ninths. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have the square root of negative 5 ninths. So what we can do is we can do the following. We can first factor out the square root of negative 1. And then we're going to take the square root of 5 divided by the square root of 9. Okay. We know that the square root of negative 1 is going to give us i times the square root of 5 
over what is the square root of 9? Well, that's 3. So therefore, that's going to be the result. And we're going to go ahead and put that in there. So now, in step number 7, this is going to be x minus 2 thirds. And that's going to equal plus or minus i times the square root of 5 over 3. Okay? Now, we want to add the 2 thirds and make sure it's in front of the plus or minus. So if we add the 2 thirds to both sides, then we're going to get the result of x, which is equal to 2 thirds plus or minus. We can leave the i with the square root of 5 over 3. Or we can write it all over the same denominator, which means we would say 2 plus or minus i times the square root of 5 all over 3. Okay, so here are two ways that we can write the solution set. Okay, the first one is the following. We would say 2 minus i times the square root of 5 over 3, and then 2 plus i times the square root of 5 over 3. Oops, let's go ahead and write that brace there. Or we can leave it as it was in that final step, which is 2 plus or minus i times the square root of 5 over 